Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer and let's thank the Lord for you know, this new week that he has blessed us with. Then we'll get into our teaching. Right. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this new week that you have blessed us with. We thank you for yet another wonderful opportunity where we could just come together and study and learn your word of God. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will Lord, speak to our hearts even as we learn uh, these principles of godly living of God. I pray that these that we will stand on these principles, we'll begin to learn and grow and walk at these principles. And thank you, Lord, for everything that is ahead for us, oh God. We pray that you will minister and speak to each of our hearts. We commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So let me just present the notes. We did up to chapter 14, if I'm not wrong. Uh, right. Uh, so just so, uh, we'll get into chapter 16, customer relationships, uh, chapter 15. We'll look at it if we have time towards the end. But I just thought we'll uh, focus on this, uh, you know, the important chapters here. So chapter 16, challenges and tough times. Now, when we talk about challenges and tough times, it doesn't matter what season or what phase of life we are in, right? Uh, we will all face challenges, we will all face tough times, whether it's in the workplace, whether we are in college, whether we are, uh, you know, even in school, um, uh, whether we are just parents, whatever phase of life we are in. Challenges and tough times are a part of life. We can't hide from it, right? We can't hide from challenges and tough times. But we must un understand that as believers, as God's children, God sometimes allows us to go through challenges and tough times. And other times, we, uh, we know, we put ourselves through challenges and tough times, you know, knowingly or even unknowingly. Uh, but today, let's talk about how in the workplace, you know, when you join an organization, initially, the first few months are, you know, you would say you're just getting into place. The managers are very good to you. They try to teach you. They, they train you. They say, okay, this is how you do it. But as time moves on, as time goes by, right, uh, things change. Right? There'll be challenges that'll be put your way. The, the, the bosses who are very kind and sweet have now become very stern and, uh, you know, they expect you to do things and get it done quickly. Uh, so it is not, it, it's not a place where we blame or we point fingers and say, okay, because he did this. But we must understand that with, with time and with working in an organization, challenges, tough times will come. But here are a few pointers that we can put in place, put it, you know, we can apply it in our lives uh, when we face workplace challenges. And number one, mountains can be conquered. We talked about this briefly, right? Every mountain, um, when we say mountain, it only basically means challenges, right? Difficult times. Matthew 17, 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith, as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, or you can say to this challenge, you can say to these tough times, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for God, for you. Sorry. Right? So there will be mountains along the way. Every one of us will face these mountains. Right? Uh, it'll be sometimes it may not even be in the workplace. It may be in your own personal lives. Right. Um, maybe a project that has come into your hands, but, you know, and, and then we keep doing this project, but then all of a sudden you feel that you know, it's too, too difficult, right? Or it's a huge mountain that I cannot conquer. But remember what God's word says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, if you say to the mountain to move, it will move. So no matter how high the mountain is, one one way that we can stay anchored in the goodness of God is to have faith in God. 
right? When you and I are putting our hard work, when we're working sincerely, when we're working hard, when we're looking to God, trust God, have faith in God, right? Uh, I always say this, right? Um, we as believers walk by faith. We don't visit faith. Now, I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, we may just crumble down in fear, which is natural. But you stand up again and say, God, I will walk by faith. I will not walk by sight. When I look at this mountain, uh, you know, in the natural, when you look at a mountain, you, you see its beauty, you see its majesty, and you see how big it is. Uh, but, you know, climbing a mountain is not an easy task. Right? People have trained for years and years and years to even get to a certain limit, uh, you know, uh, to a certain height of a mountain. So many of them have lost their lives trying to, you know, just uh, go above a certain limit. So it's not easy. That's in the natural. But in the spiritual, there will be these mountains. But remember that mountains can be conquered when we have faith in God. So stay, stay anchored. And the goodness of God. Let you know towards in, in every season, in every situation, uh, find something positive that you can praise God for, and that's what the next point is. Maintain a positive attitude. Be thankful. First Thessalonians five sixteen and eighteen. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray at all times. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you, who belong to Christ Jesus, to live. Now, when you look at a situation, there may be nine things that are going wrong. There may be one thing that is going wrong, you know, okay. One thing that's looking good. Hold on to that one positive thing. I know it's very easy to look at the nine because they're just jumping at you. These nine things are just attacking you. It's coming to your mind. It's attacking your thinking your words your actions everything is being attacked but that one thing which is good or, or a positive thing that's happening in a situation we try to push it away rather what you and i can do as believers is to stay cheerful no matter what happens right so it may look like you know these nine things are wrong but you hold on to that one thing god i want to thank you i want to thank you Right? And if there's nothing to thank God for in a situation, just thank Him for the gift of life. If you are at home, thank God for that. Right? Why? Because there are many of them who are sitting in the hospital. They've been sick. They have been in hospitals for years, for months and years. Right? But you're at home. You're at home. Maybe you're going through a difficult situation. Maybe we're crying and praying. And, you know, we're thinking, God, are you even listening to me? But find that place of, you know, comfort and be thankful. How can we do that? We can just say, God, I know the season that I'm going through is very bad. Nothing looks right. But, Lord, I want to thank you for the gift of life. There are many of them who've lost their lives. There are many of them who are in hospital, hanging on to dear life. But you've given me good health, you've given me good, good strength. And I know that, you know, one day I will overcome this mountain. So, you know, when you focus on the, on the things that have been good and positive things, all of a sudden these, these mountains which look like mountains, it doesn't look like anything. Sometimes we, you know, we, we think, hey, why was I even worried about this? Why well, it's nothing to be worried about. Because we are focusing on the positive. You know, as, as pastors, we go to you know a lot of funerals, right? And it's a reality check for us. Because one day we know that we're all gonna pass this, and we're gonna all be there, right? That's we know that we cannot run away from it, we cannot hide from it. But Many a times, you know, I have said to myself, God, I want to thank you. This life that we are living is a gift. Right? It may not be that everything is going the way I want it to go. But the gift of life itself is something that we must be grateful for. So find things that you can be positive about. 
right? Don't be focusing only on what's going wrong. Focus on what God can do in your life, right? Then don't lose your confidence. Psalms 40, uh, 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord's help. Then he listened to me and heard my cry. He pulled me out of a dangerous pit, out of a deadly quicksand. He set me safely on a rock and made me secure. He taught me to sing a new song, a song of praise to our God. Many who will see this will take warning and will put their trust in the Lord. Now, here again, David is writing and he's saying, don't lose co your confidence. Now, I think David is somebody who can really say this with all confidence because he had many, many situations where he could have just said, okay, God, I'm losing confidence, right? He had Saul running after him. He had uh, you know, uh, enemies attacking him from every side. He was hiding in caves. And it's very easy for him to lose confidence, but he did not. Right? Don't give place to negative thoughts. Right? See this, negative thoughts like fear, anxiety, or depression. Remember, fear, anxiety, depression, they destroy faith. They destroy it. Right? So don't lose your confidence. Stay strong in the Lord. Stay anchored in God. Right? Sing a new song to the Lord. And one of the things we can do is we can just uh, you know, look to the Lord and say, God, I know that I, I feel weak. I know that I'm losing confidence, but I know that I can also put my trust in you. And you are a God who will work in my life. Right? So here's what Psalm says in uh, Psalm 42, 11. This is what David is saying. Why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? I will put my hope in God. Once again, I will praise him, my Savior and God. So it was like David is speaking to his own soul, his own emotions. Right? As a human being, David, I'm sure he, he, he's going through all of these difficulties. Right? He's seeing it firsthand, but he's, he's speaking to his own soul and he's saying, Why are you sad? Why are you so troubled? You know, when I was a shepherd boy, Probably he thought of all this. When I was a shepherd, I killed a lion and I killed a bear with my own hands. When I, when all the armies of Israel was afraid of uh, Goliath, I was standing there. I killed Goliath by God's hand, with the help of God. God was with me. So now, why am I sad? Why am I troubled? Why am I afraid? I know that God is with me. Even though I don't see it, I don't feel it, I know God is with me. So I will put my hope in God. Once again, I will praise him. Look at that. You know, he just he just turned his he spoke to his emotions, to his soul, and he looked to God. So don't 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 lose confidence in yourself, number one, and don't lose confidence in God. Because we know with God all things are possible. But there's nothing that he cannot do. But he also expects us to be confident in him. Right? Tap into empowered efficiency. Joshua 23, 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God is he who fights for you, as he promised you. Now, humanly speaking, practically, one man cannot outdo a thousand people. But in God's kingdom, in God's kingdom, it, it's different. Right? There will be situations you'll have to work alone. There will be situations where you may be given a task where 10 people must do that task. Huge, huge uh, work, you know, especially when, you know, when organizations, when you look at the corporate sector, suddenly what organizations do is they downsize. Right? So there may be 500 employees, they suddenly lay off 200 employees. So you've got 300 people working who have to do 500 people's work. Right? And so what's going to happen? The managers are going to put a lot of work on you. So you may have to do 10 people's work. Now, this is not uncommon. This is something that happens even now. Right? It's extremely stressful. It is challenging. But here is where, under these situations, you tap into empowered efficiency. 
God has promised, I will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Step up to the task and deliver. Right? Don't look at how come they are not doing, how come, you know, in my team, I am the one who is doing 10 people's work, but nobody else is doing. That person is doing only five people's work, but I'm doing 10 people's work. How come this is not fair? We can think of all of that, but remember when, if God is putting these things on you, you can tap into empowered efficiency, tap into the spirit of God, ask him for wisdom, ask him for direction. And, you know, he will give you success. He will give you success. Remember, we talked about uh, uh, Nehemiah uh, quite a few chapters back. We talked about uh, the leadership attitude that he carried. This was a huge task. He had no people. He, he had the people he had was regular Jews who had no experience in building a wall. But when Nehemiah saw this, he took it up for himself. He said, "I'm going to tap into God." Nehemiah was a cupbearer. He had to just taste, or he had to just come and you know present wine, or every, you know just be there at the king's table. He doesn't have any, uh, you know, certificate in, in structural engineering or anything, no. But he tapped into empowered efficiency. He said, I'm going to do this. What about Daniel? Same thing, right? He he tapped into empowered efficiency. He, know, he knew he had the spirit of excellence. And at a young age, it is, he, he said, okay, I'm going to follow what God, God has asked me to do and opportunity i'm sure you know it didn't come easily to become an administrator in babylon i'm sure the kings would have you know given him so much of work so much of tasks to do but he was excellent and the bible says they could not find anything wrong with his work but only with his god that they could trap him so you tap into god's power you tap into that efficiency rather than grumbling Rather than complaining and murmuring, it happened to them. You say, God, I know this is a season. You may have to put on 12 hours of work. You may have to sacrifice sleep, time. But remember, it's a season. It'll pass by and God will reward you for that season. Right? And, and also, I would like to say that sometimes, you know, reward may, may not come. We may feel, hey, I did all of this, but I, I'm not even rewarded. It's okay. Remember, God is your boss. So don't worry about bad bosses or unfair employees, employers. And God is your boss. Now, Paul is writing to the Ephesians. He's talking about bond servants and how he says to be obedient to your masters, not with eye service, but as men pleasers. Uh, uh, and, and not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart so basically he's saying see you're you're a servant you're a believer you believe in jesus but you're working under an employer you do your work not uh, not with eye service but you're doing it because you love god and god is the one who has placed you there and you do the work with all your heart the moment we have this you know this understanding in our heart that will change our perspectives, right? So we say, God, this organization, for example, right, this organization has hired me. They are paying my salary. They are going to reward me for the things that I do. Well, ultimately, God, I am working for you. And I, I'm, I am going to work sincerely. And I know, God, that you will reward me. So help me to walk in integrity, help me to walk in honor, help me to focus on you. And God did that for Jacob. Jacob's story is wonderful, right? Uh, uh, Jacob and uh, uh, Laban's story is really wonderful. Genesis 31, four through seven. Uh, you know, it, through this story, we can, we can see that when we focus on the Lord, we can expect his intervention, right? Uh, the boss treated him. Changed and changed his wages ten times, but God blessed Jacob more than he can imagine. Right? More than he could imagine. So, so always remember that when we 
when we work for the Lord, God intervenes. And he can speak to these unfairly unruly bosses. Now, when it comes to ministry, we may not, you know, have unfair or unruly bosses and leaders. But when it comes to the corporate sector, I'm sure there will be. Their names may be, you know, John, Peter, Andrew. They may have Christian names, but the way they work may be completely opposite. Right? So, so during those times, during these seasons, ask the Lord to intervene in your situations. Bouncing back when you are put down. Proverbs 29, 26. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. Look at that. And this is Solomon writing. He's saying, and he's, he's a ruler himself. He's a king. He's saying, many seek our favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. Many times, you know, this word, people can position to manipulate things and displace you. Right? Manipulate and displace you. Think of these two words, manipulate. Sometimes leaders and you know can manipulate you. Can say you do it like this. If you do this report this way, then it, then you know it'll be good for you. You will be able to, uh, you know, we'll give you a promotion. Or they may displace you. They may say, hey, uh, this person did it. You know, you may be working sincerely, but they may not even look at you. They may take you out from your current role and put, you know, put false accusations on you. Such things happen in organizations. Now, I'm not saying it's not good to have favor from your boss. Remember Daniel when he was uh, 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 the governor, uh, Darius, King Darius came and uh, the Persian king, and he had favor from King Darius. Daniel had favor. So it's good to have favor from the manager. So, but then when, when it's good to have favor, but it's also remember that God is the one who will fight for you. Right? Don't fight back. Don't retaliate. Don't go around speaking ill of your boss or your manager. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And with God's help, you will come back strong. You will come back diligent. You will come back with great results. Look at these things. These are very important. The, the initial reaction is to fight back. Normally. The initial reaction could be to retaliate. Or if you can't do any of these two, just go around speaking bad. The speaking is not going to cost you anything. Fighting back could cost you a lot of work to get done. Retaliating can cause a lot of work. But you can also speak ill, which, but don't do that. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Look at Daniel. They signed the petition. Those who don't bow down to this idol will be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel did not fight back. Daniel did not retaliate. Daniel did not go about speaking ill of any of his leaders. What did Daniel do? He went back to his home, opened the windows, looked towards Jerusalem, and looked to God. What he did as usual, he did. And God fought for him. He came back strong. Actually, to see Daniel, it didn't even really bother him. That people are trying to trap him. They don't bother him. Because there's no account of him getting weary or angry or upset. There's no account. Nothing changed. He was he was too deep in God that it didn't affect him at all. And that's how we can be. There'll be people who say things to you, say, you know, you are this, you are that, or you may not get the promotion that you deserved. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Look to him. He will. He will give you the opportunities. Don't stoop down to the level of gossip and organizational politics. Now, there will be gossip. There will be politics in any organization. Unfortunately, this is the truth. Workplace gossips, politics will be there. As believers, don't stoop down to their level. That's why I love 
I love to have this picture of the eagle. You don't see the eagles with the crows. You don't see them mingling with crows. Or with, you don't see them. If crows try to come and, you know, there are eagles flying and then sometimes the eagles choose to fly low. And then when the crows come and they try to, you know, uh, trouble them or something, the, the crows, the eagles are not going to fight the crows. I've not seen it happening. What are they going to do? They're just going to fly higher. And they know the crow cannot reach there. You just go up. I don't want to waste my time. You know, if you think of the eagle, the eagle is thinking, I don't want to waste my time fighting against the crow. Because I know I can finish him off. Eagles are designed to kill snakes and they're designed, they have such great eyesight, they're able to you know, pick up things from such great distances. But the crow is nothing. They don't stoop down to the level of gossip or politics. Tell yourself, you know, there's this picture that somebody showed me once a long time back. Uh, I mean, you've seen those dog races, right? Um, and there were these fast running dogs. Right? So they usually have it's like these competitions. And then so they thought, OK, let us see if we can put a leopard to run against these dogs. So what they did is they put one leopard and about nine or ten dogs. Right? And this is a true story that really happened. Right? And uh, the person who took the photo of this was, uh, you know, uh, he it really touched his his life as well. Like, like he understood so much. And about nine dogs, these are like really fast running dogs, really fast. Right? They were trained to run. And they put a leopard there inside. They said, okay, when, when, when the gunshot goes, all the animals will run. But to the surprise, the leopard was just sitting inside. It chose not even to run. And the, you know, the picture said, choose your battles wisely. And the leopard is not bothered that the dogs are running. Why? Because the leopard doesn't have to prove to anyone. The leopard will easily defeat those dogs. The leopard is, it, it's, it's a very, very fast animal. It's not designed to run with dogs. Not at all. Right? So you choose your battles wisely. Don't go down to oh, gossip and politics. See, you can't take away the gossip and the politics, but you can choose to fly above it. You can choose to conquer evil by doing what is good.
Yeah, sorry, I, I think uh, there was a problem with my network. Uh, the internet just dropped. Everyone can hear me okay? Okay, all right. Uh, okay, sorry, I, I don't know when I lost you because I uh, sharing the no it's okay so uh, as i was saying uh we were talking about the whole aspect of god being your defense against false allegations uh then resolving business conflicts among brethren uh matthew 18 15 through 17 right? it says if your brother sins against you i'm sure we know this verse right uh go to him show me a fault but do it privately between among yourselves but if he does not listen, take another person. Uh, and if he does not listen to that as well, tell the whole church. If he does not listen to that as well, then uh, you can uh, you know, just let it go or just treat him as a pagan. That is uh, what is shown here. So uh, sometimes conflicts may arise among believers, right? engaging in business together. But it's very important that we learn to resolve these matters in a healthy way. right? only go to legal proceedings as the last option and paul writes in first corinthians he talks about this right how can you drag your own brother into uh, the court and then when you do that what are you doing you are uh, what will the people who are outside what will gentiles think what will they think that uh, being the same family they're fighting against each other so paul was very stern with them right so uh, there will be times among believers, there will be these challenges, but as a last resort, you take it as take it take it up legally, right? Um, don't let male chauvinism or prejudice shake you. Um, meaning, this is a note for women, right? Now, in situations uh, in the workplace, sometimes you know men will feel, "Hey, I'm stronger, I'm better." Women may look maybe look down inferior. Right. Remember, women, that you are equal in God's eyes. You are not lesser. You have the same Holy Spirit. You have the same gifts of the Holy Spirit. You have uh, the fruit of the Spirit, right? So you, uh, don't let all of these, you know, uh, or because he's a male, or uh, don't let prejudice shake him. Because he's a man, so only he can be a manager. Or because he's a male, he only he can be a CEO. No, right? Stand your ground. Continue to demonstrate your values that you are bringing to the organization. Uh, uh, if things don't change, move on. There are other things in life you can you can always, uh, you know, ask God to grant you favors. So don't let those feelings of, you know, because I'm a you know I'm a woman. I may not get the opportunities that a male gets. It may be true in the workplace, but to God, we both both men and women are equal. And so we stand with that. We understand that uh, God gives us the same opportunity, the same Holy Spirit, the same wisdom, uh, and we can raise up to greater levels, right? Say no to male sexual advances and requests. Now, uh, in the workplace, uh, women, again, there will be uh, men who will give indirect hints, right? And it's not something that is new. There will be these things happening. Uh, take precautions, stay wise, be sensible, uh, run away from things, stay, say no to advances, uh, right? That may come to you in the workplace. Now, I'm not saying this is only in the corporate. It could also happen in ministries. Uh, we've heard of ministries where men and men of God have uh, you know, advance towards, uh, you know, women and taking advantage of them. So say no and protect yourself, right? Don't give in to pressure. And sometimes because, oh, what if I lose my job? What if I don't get another job? Uh, so uh, so we, we give in, right? Don't do that, right? Say no, stand your ground. You are God's child, right? You're, you're God's property. You cannot be, uh, you know, a loving uh, men, men to come against you in this way and right? stay away from the woman seducer don't play with fire so men um, there are sometimes women who will lure you they have habits of you know of, uh, for favors sexual favors sometimes they um, you know women try to 
uh, direct your attention to someone else or to or even if you know in the workplace uh, there are many times we've spoken of people where women have men have left their wife and and probably their children beautiful children beautiful family why because of a woman in the workplace right uh, just luring them uh, stay away from them and don't play with fire right? Uh, remember that God is watching you. God is watching us. And we need to be careful on what, how we stand our ground. Right? If you are ridiculed for your faith, stand strong, knowing that you are blessed. Again, uh, you know, we will be ridiculed at times, right? For our faith, hey, you know, this guy is only talking about Jesus. Sundays, he's not going to come for, uh, you know, playing football or playing soccer because he goes to church. Or he's always uh, praying and he's always doing the sign of the cross or he's always doing this he's always uh, preaching to us people will ridicule you and that's a fact they've done it to jesus they did it to his disciples they did it to the early church they will the enemy will keep doing it till the end of time it will be ridiculed right but continue to do your work again as we said right stand strong focus on god know that you know it's such a blessing uh, that people are ridiculing you for your faith right? it's a blessing that means you are you're doing something right you're working and you're standing with godly principles if you're not being ridiculed for your faith sometimes you can say hey am i being a believer or what in the workplace right but if you are being ridiculed it's all right that means you're standing your ground that means you're standing with god's principles and, and walking with godly principles, right? Wisdom answers to nepotism. A wise servant will rule over a son who causes shame and will share an inheritance among the brothers. Right? A wise servant. Now, uh, nepotism is basically when uh, you know a boss may have a son or a daughter, and they've been just given the uh, role of a manager or senior manager even if they are not capable of performing the work right and it's very easy for us to say hey because you know your father is a boss so now you become the assistant manager uh, how can you do that and it's very easy but remember respond with wisdom your wisdom will get you noticed and give you access i was, I was reading an article you know we we're talking about uh, um the pharaoh and uh, you know, when, during Moses' time, Moses was scheduled to be the next pharaoh. Because this history proves that he went, he won many wars. He was the strongest Egyptian commander during that time. Uh, he knew he's a Hebrew. The, the pharaoh knew that he is not Egyptian. But you know, he was able to. He was able to show it by his work. Right? So wisdom will get you noticed and give you access. Uh, you know, wisdom is greater than nepotism. Right? So I'm not saying nepotism will be there, but you continue to uh, work in wisdom. The pink slip and honorable exits. Now, there are two things here. Right? So one is sometimes we will have to let people go part of the organization and other times people will want to leave the organization uh, maybe for a better job or for their own personal reasons right in both of these situations do it in an honorable way if you are getting somebody to requesting them to leave the job be honorable try to leave in good terms be friendly be honorable all right um, and maybe you can help them plan for the next step if a person has already got a new job and he is, wants to move from the current job to another job, bless them. Don't don't fight to them and say, "Hey, you have to stay." You know what? You, you know, I I I spoke to, I served you. I mean, I provided for you for so many years. How can you leave? Uh, no, we release them honorably. Let them go. Right. Remember that. Stay yielded to God, His purpose. And he will work all things for good. Right? But especially when it comes to letting people go, it's hard. We may have to do that. Right? Uh, we have to do it 
in a non-difficult way. Right? So remember, challenges and tough times can be conquered, and we conquer it through faith. And mountains can be conquered. So if you or any of us are facing a mountain in our life, whether personal or in the, in the workplace, wherever we are, remember to maintain these attitudes. Right? Uh, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll just take a little bit of an extended break. We'll come back at 11. And uh, we will go to the next chapter. Uh, and hopefully, we should be able to complete the next chapter. Right, let's take a break. We'll come back at 11 o'clock. Thank you.